easy people. Okay, so we're going to do some uh, hip hop this time from start to end. Well, obviously, before I get to uh, finishing the arrangement, um, I was going to do this for my r- record collection, but I've just moved and do you know what I mean? YouTube's there, so this is what you can do jack something from YouTube. So there's a thing called Soul Hawk, and it's got some load of old school R&B on it. So I just chose one track, and uh, yeah, gonna try and do something here. So first thing, what I did is I've plugged my inputs out of my sound card into here. So I'm gonna just work in sample edit instead of doing it straight to a drum program. And take it for granted, I'm just going to be naming stuff throughout and just top and tail it. So I've just got the sample. Um, there you go. There, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'll do. And I'll just crop that down. And then I'm just going to make a drum program and use sample edit. It's lazy chop. So Lady Chop on the Akai Force is on the screen as opposed to the pads. It's different than the MPC, but it's got plus and minuses, so instead of using the pads for sample edit, I just use the screen. And then going to pad in sample edit, I can assign the slices in any order I like. I get one and then I just copy it and I keep all the parameters of that one slice. And then all I have to do is change the position of the slices and uh, Bob's your uncle. Or oh, maybe you haven't got Uncle Bob. So, yeah, blah, 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 blah. You know the thing. And then I'll start pressing pads with the chords and notes that I've chopped up. Try to look for any kind of melody in there. Like, da, 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 something. And what I should do is make them cut each other off so just quickly while i'm doing this i'll make it to mono and that's um in drum program edit yeah that sounds crusty like i said i just copied a load of noises and then i'm just trying to hear anything in it it's kind of like a like one of them puzzle things. Yeah, anyway, everybody's got lives, so you get the gist. I'm trying to do that, and then I've come up with something now. Well, I think I have. Yeah, that'll work. So, for anybody from the UK, I did a Blue Peter job here. I've got some track presets I created. Here's one. Oh, that's too fast. That slow that down. Um, this is a drum pattern. What I did, and then I saved the track preset. But I'm going to change the sound of the drums. Um, a beats, old school hip hop style. So that's kind of more of a '90s feel kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, shut up. So anyway. Um, I'm just going to go through a few sounds and for anybody who don't know if you want to just replace the sounds and you don't want a double up on samples by doing this while the drum pad's open it'll just take it'll exchange the sounds so these are all modern hip hop so that's no good for me so it's time for me to go into my MPC expansions I have admittedly been trying to use everything just straight out of um, what comes with a force but sometimes you just gotta dive in so i mean the mpc expansion is really good so i would say go get them you can either sail the <laughs> sail the seas with jack sparrow or go and get them proper you, you know what i mean if you don't don't worry about it just got uh, the uh, akai uh, store shop website good lord i'm half baked right let's see if we can get this tune to be somewhere now i've got my idea 
So let's see. Now, my special is, I always say, just play your idea. Just play as, as many as you're comfortable with. Because I believe in happy accidents. And happy accidents are always when you just, just go one to three and just do it. So I'm just doing this and I'm like, it, it thinking, da, 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 oh, whatever, whatever. But I got enough of it. That I know I've got enough of it. And this is what's great about this now is I know I'm going to just use four bars of that just for movement. So I like that, and I'm, I like where that is now. Da, 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 da. So that's not in the right place. But the beauty of this is I move that. And then I'm going to move the start. So the start is on that second bit. So it loops back round. Yeah, I'm going to use something like that. But because that's not in the right place now, what I need to do is double it. Because if I double it, it's like a pattern. Well, it's, it obviously is a pattern. But I mean, it's twice the pattern. So now I can move where that position is in the four bars so that I've got it at the beginning of the bar so you see there now it starts in the right place so I can just trim the rest now yeah ah oh, let me yeah yeah <laughs> I'm joking um so next thing I want to do is put all the musical parts into a mute group um so I'm gonna go to multiple choose all the the um bass kind of music parts so I've got them all and then go back and underneath filter there's a mute goop and then now they'll just knock each other out I always like little vocal chop bits in my tunes just so that I've got movement just subtle in the background so I need to filter out some of the bass because it might have snares and bits like that in there and what's great about um, Akai Force and MPC drum program is that it's just got a world of filters and they've really thought about it because they've took all the information what they had from before about like people wanting to strip out bass out of vocals and stuff like that and you should check them out because there's some great ones So now to the note config, which I think is ace. I think it's one of the main reasons why I got like the Akai Force is the note config is great. I'm one of these pe people who kind of worked out the difference between C and F last week. I mean, even now I go, right, well, there's two black notes before C, well, after C, and three black notes after F. And that's how I have to kind of remember it. So most of my things about humming it, da, 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 and that's how I figured out that, because I go, da, 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 da. and then the greatest thing is, this teaches me at the same time, because now I'm starting to realize, all oh, right, well, it's minor, and like, oh, right, this is E flat now. So I'm getting something musical, even if I'm not going to use this. So now what I want to try and do is, because I'm hearing chords, so like, I thought, right, let me, let me find the first note, like, duh. And, and don't forget, you can also move through the key, because that's another thing I've noticed. When you get the cluster of like the, the chord cluster, right, you can use the, the actual key, the root key, to move it around. So what I'm trying to say is, is there anything more exotic on mic? I can hear it now. Duh. So I'm like, yeah. Because what I was thinking is, like, should it be up? Duh. And I'm thinking, is that right? So I'm like, chicken, and I'm like, yeah, that no, it is. You know what I mean? You, it's one of these things you have to kind of go through it. And then I'm going to listen to that first, so duh, so that's a duh, where did he hear duh, let me go back again, duh. right, that's that note, duh, so if I get that duh, where that's dominant, and then I find the chord, what goes like that, then I know it's going to be right. 
so that I've seen that as C now. So that's how I can find that chord now because I found the dominant note in that. Um, I'm told the dominant is uh, the third note of a chord. So like if you ever hum a melody and you want the chords to work to that, you're always looking for the third note in that one, three, five thing. Like I said, I'm not no music genius guy, so that's what I figured out. Don't take my word for it, but that's what somebody told me. That's the dominant one and it seems to work. So that's how I got that. And like, I'm hearing there's an organ there. So what I try to do is I try to match up similar sounds. So I'm using hype now to get that. But that that first bass didn't seem, it seemed a bit off. So I'm just kind of fine tuning it. Because the thing about samples is it's off violin, um, vinyl and like they might have tuned all their instruments to each other when the band were playing. So when you come along with a computer, it might just not quite be right. So I'm, and instead of me tuning the key, I'm tuning the sample so that everything will be right. So now I know that's right. Da, 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 da. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. So now I need to find the da. Should it be high or should it be low? Da, da. Da, da. So let me work out. Maybe it's da, da. So one more. So remember, you don't have to do everything in one go. So don't think you always have to, all right, I've got to figure out progression and do it all in one go. No, do it bits by bit, because you get the progression the sooner you get it. And if you need to play that live, you can just break it down the same way if you want to. So like that kind of sounds all right, but I want to I wanna go with that, because that's what was humming. So the only thing about this is it sounds like Mystery horror theatre or something it's right sinister. There should be some like candelabras and some some gadget walking upstairs in a cloak or something. So I don't know about this vibe. I'm just trying to see if I can find something else. And now um, what I'm doing is little chords higher up because I might give it a bit more um, dynamic movement. Da, da. We're in the haunted house. I'm gonna be as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> yeah, this is. I know, I kinda know where I'm going, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm changing that sound. It's, you know, there's a world of like flying bats in here now. So. Filter gate. Filter gate's quite good. I'm gonna change the key here, cause I don't know. Some, do you know what I mean? Sometimes you're like, no, it needs a different vibe, cause like I said, it, it was like mystery horror theater or some. I don't know. Anyone in the UK remember Hammer House of Horrors or something like that? And I'm not really. My, one of my problems is just sometimes when I'm making hip hop tracks, I get right musical and, and then like I have to kind of draw back. Because the thing about a lot of times, if you want something tough, you want less, but I still want movement in there. So I, I'm feeling this a bit. Still trying and tuning that first note. I know all of it to kind of gel right so that I know all of it's kind of gelling. Let me try it. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's that's better. Yeah. It's a musical mystery 
mind And no more than the summer, summer touches the river line Yeah, it's got more of a, yeah, I'm feeling that Now, this is a happy accident Because I just remembered them chords are different now But I kind of like that That's kind of sparkly So, oh, yeah Now, as I said before in, a, in another video The thing is that that filter sometimes you, you need to reset the clock and because I don't want to keep having that filter kind of bounce around what I always try to do is I always try to flatten stuff and again I'm hearing my favorite thing the looper so one of my favorite things about that because if I can flatten that sound I know that's what I want so that's good I've got that now so I'm good I did an overdub actually there, didn't mean to, but you'd be all right. That's all right, that's thick enough for me, that'll, that'll do. So um, I'm doing all, um, a uh, audio track and I'll export that to that audio track as a clip. So I've got that there as one clip. So now I've just got a hype keyboard back again. Like I say, I always try to keep things slim so that I've got everything that I want and I ain't got any other junk. Thing is, I can't even remember if I've purged this at the moment. So I'll have to have a think, have I? Have I even saved it? Like I say, I was trying, I remember, I wish, one thing I hope they do is they do some kind of purge thing that like, you can purge everything what's in the folders because you can purge things what are in the, the uh, sample memory but you can't purge things what are in folders anyway, back to this I heard something so what I'm going to just loop it because like I say it's too musical and I want it to be kind of tougher so I've heard that I like that there so I'm going to make that a little loop like that so it's chimey yeah Kind of like public enemy kind of thing where it's just a chimey But I'm gonna have it play and then go into that loop Yeah, it's not the mystical misery more It's like history, so much me. Yeah, that kind of vibe I'm feeling that now Yeah Yeah, so that's vibing I'm with that So, what should I do now? Yeah, okay, cool. So, let's uh, let's purge and save this. Like I says, the thing about me is I'll go up until a point and clear as much as I want until I've got the, the thing that I feel I want as that project. And then now I'm just going to go to my project folders, which is on my uh, internal SSD what I put in um, for anybody who's asking I think it's worth getting an SSD I'd get a terabyte um, even that might be overkill but for when the updates come or anything like that and the arranger comes then you'll be ready like and you'll have enough space and I've just got I've got like a load of samples so now I've just freed up that hype now so I'm going to try and find another thing a, a riff I'm gonna try and maybe come up with some kind of riff. Uh, I got the idea, I saw somebody do something like that. They did some kind of slide and they were like, oh, wait a minute, because this is all in scale, I could do something like that. Something like that. Just to break it up, all of these sounds are gonna be settled underneath. So, yeah. Well, you turn off the arpeggiator. So, yeah. So what I'm I intend to do is I'm intent to do a pitch bend, but I'm gonna do it again, again in bits. So here we go. And I'll bend that now. Down. But initially I was trying to do it in one go, but there's no point. I don't need to do everything in one go, that's a great swing a bite. Just do it bit by bit. So I'm gonna bend that last note. Down. 
So again, remember, you can move that locator, so that locator is your cursor. So I've purposely done a space because I want this to kind of come in and out, not, not just in a loop. I'm gonna do that a little later when I start doing arrangements. So that first note wasn't quite right. So I've got um, nudge on and put on dove snap so that I can just move it so that it just goes and I think that's quite right now so now I'm just getting the loop to right so I'll bring that back to the start again because I've fixed what I need to at the moment so let me just see if that gels yeah I like that slide you see the other thing is if you get things quite close to how you want them and be like nah, it's not quite right you can just move notes using a nudge and don't snap. I, I, a lot of times I use uh, the data dial. I think that data dial's really ace. So now I'm going to do that pitch bend sound by using the tune and moving the tune. And then I'll record that as automation. Here we go. Bend. What I kind of wish it went even further. I wish it went like to 300. So if I can add that, make it, I don't know, 500 and then just really just bend it down. There's ways I could do that. But like I say, I always try to keep these quite short because um, I could take that note and then bend it again. And Yeah, but no, I'm all right with that. So again, I'm flattening this because I know that's all I need it to do. I'm not changing anything else. I'm, I'm good with that sound. So I just bring down this, the level of that sound. And the only thing I want to do is I want it to kind of fade. So move my locator and I'm going to make it fade by doing the volume. And the volume is just for this clip. So while I was doing this track, I started to realize something else what I thought was ace. The step sequencer. The step sequencer is really, really useful for, for a lot of stuff. Like, now what I'm realizing is I wanted the volume to kind of go down. So initially, what I did is I thought I'll do the automation here on the end. And I went, oh, that, that's wrong. So I'll slide it down. Because like I've said to you before, I'm learning while you're learning and anything that I find new, I'm doing here in front of you as well. So that's the way I faded it. But what I start to realize is like, well, I've got that faded, but I could go more. I could make it reverb out and fade out because that fade doesn't sound quite right. And that's when I realize the step sequence is really useful. So I'm going here, I'm going to the mixer settings and then I've got reverb on one send and I've got delay on another send. So I realize, oh, well, then do you know what I can do? I can just add one to, to make the send. So I don't have to do this all manual. I just could take the locator to where I'm going to be using it. So I'm not waiting for the tune. All right. And then I, I, I realized initially I was going to do it um, how I did the one with the finger. And I realized, no, I don't have to. I can make it go over here. But because I haven't used the, the thing before, I was like, well, preset will do it. But I realized, oh, you've got to highlight it first. Then you do it. So now I can use the preset. So now the send turns up. And it's going to only turn up in that section of bar. Remember this, though, and I, I, I don't show this on here, but remember this, um, you've got to turn it off because if you don't and you go to a, another clip, it's going to continue with the last thing it's moved. It's like Cubase or any, any automation. You've got to remember that to reset it. So what I'd advise is either turn the last one on, off, here so I could either turn the last one off or go to the bar after because this is like um, obviously you can see by the red line at the top there's there's more there's more space after that so just remember to to actually 
turn it down on the last finger of the automation and then that'll reset it. Uh, hopefully what I'm saying kind of makes sense. You've got to reset the automation because if you don't, it'll carry on in the last position it was in, which I did. So now I'm trying to say, is there any other bits of sounds? Because I'm thinking I could, there should be some more sounds. Like I say, I I always want to get musical. I want a lot of movement in this because I'll take a sample, but I don't want the sample just to be a loop. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you hear something and it's like, that's an ace loop and it just has to be done as a loop. But a lot of times, even if I get a loop, I still want to be able to have, be able to break that loop down. So maybe there's a little bit of guitar I can add into it based on that sample. So I'm hearing the horn and I'm going back into that, that sample. The way I look at a sample is like uh, a, a turkey at Christmas. You've got the initial turkey dinner, the whole thing, and then like the day after, you want to make sandwiches out of it and then use the bones and whatever. So this is, I don't know what this is. It's a, it's a bit of the bone. It, well, not a bit of the bone, that's the soup and then there's a bit of cranberry sauce with the filter. So I'm getting that horn and I'm just filtering it. And the greatest thing about it is because it's all the same sample, it's in the same key, so I don't have to move the key or anything. And then now what I'm doing is I've switched it over to um, one, one note and I'm using the amp envelope so that when I press it, it decays and then the release is a little longer. So it starts in loud and then I press it and then it'll fade. And then I thought, well, let's go the extra step now. So the next thing I'm going into is the modulation and I'm using the amp. And what I, I was thinking in my mind was kind of like a, I was going to make it go da 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 So I'm using the square wave on that, um, on the modulation, and I'm using it on amp. So it's cutting that in and out. So now um, I want another sound. I want a kind of... I don't even know what, like a drone. So the arpeggiator, and then just find a sound. So that's kind of a background thing. I, I don't even know what that you call this. I call them kind of drones. And as I do, flatten it, because I know that's what I want it to be. And then just, again, make it a little more quieter, but only on that crit. So all of these sounds, uh, on the one audio track and because I know that they're not going to be playing over each other that's fine and then to turn it up and down again I can use uh, the step sequencer so that step sequencer comes in really handy and um, now it's time to kind of Toughen it up and mix um, these drums. So I'm going to come down. First thing is on these drums is the channel strip. The channel strip's really, really good. I'm telling you. So I'm, I'm using the compressor. If anybody wants me to do a bit more of a discussion about compressor, I will. But. I'm sure there's loads of people out there where I've gone, but all I've done is I've just compressed the sound a bit and now I'm using the bass and EQing the bottom end of the bass to just kind of make, you know what I mean, bring stuff up. What I noticed was because the, the kick and the snare had little hi-hat tails, I brought them up and they started to sound a bit funny, so I kind of tailed off some of the uh, kick and that lot. It changed a bit of the vibe, but 
I think that kick's cutting through a bit more now And that snare's kind of splatting a bit more right in my head It's kind of toughened it up And then just to kind of make it bounce a bit I'm putting um, the mother ducker And again, now my second new favourite thing Is uh, the step sequencer Because look at that I did the fill in there and then I just turned it down and that's it so I'm not messing about with the pattern I'm just messing about with the levels on that pattern and how I want them the, the actual velocity of them because I want it to go like so even that first one maybe I'm bring that down a little that's it yeah So what I did is I copied that initial sample and I'm going to double it up. The, the first sample's really bassy, so the second sample I'm going to take all of the bass off it and keep the top frequencies. And um, that way what I should have is just a thickening of like the top frequencies so some of them sounds in that sample should cut through a bit more. And then as I like to experiment so I'm thinking well, can I make a bit more space in this sample? And I'm thinking, well, a way I could make a bit more space, maybe, I don't know, let's try the filter again. Because I know that that had filter on it, but try a different filter. So again, I've EQ'd out the low frequencies and now I'm gonna EQ out even more kind of I don't know how to explain it. I'm gonna make it put a bit more resonance to bring up the me the kind of mid frequencies, the high ones. As you could probably hear, that organ's got a lot stronger now. So it's just that little bit I'm adding, but not more bass. But because when the both of them are on, it kind of cuts through more. Because remember, there's no laws that say you have to just use that one sample like that one way. I doubled it up to bring it through a bit more. Just in case it was getting lost with them, them drums. And at the moment, there's no bass. A lot of times I'll add in my own little bass, like they're going doom. So I might add that in a little later, we'll see. But at the moment I'm good good with that. Then I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe a filter again, just on that top one. I'm just wanting as much things with movement as possible, but I don't want to use a 16th all the time. So I'll make that move a bit through the, the filter, because what that is, is it's got a light. It's got a LFO, so it's slightly moving with a frequency. But then in my mind, I thought, no, I don't want it on 16s. We'll just have it on that, so it's cutting in and out, dropping in and out. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm doing here is, I'm gonna add a delay onto that copy, so that it, it hopefully, it should, when I put send in, it'll, it'll send kind of left and right. And it should make it feel a bit wider, hopefully. So let's see. There. So that's just in the background. So hopefully, if you've got headphones on, you'll see it should have a bit more space in there now. Yeah. Yeah, there. So now it's just com coming in. So now, 
All of them little chops are now going to have a bit more... Do you know what I mean? I've got the main ones as well, so when I want the sound to come up from the front, it'll be like that. When I want it on the back, it's doing it. And the only thing, again, I've noticed something that, oh, oh, I think I'm going to have that as, as again, I, I just call them drones, so it's not playing a lot. Toughening it up by making things repeat again, just subtly in the background. Yeah, I'm good with that. I commit, trim that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is it. It's a mystery, magical, whatever. Summer, 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 tragical. Yeah. So this is the tune anyway. I'm gonna let this play, have a listen. Tell me what you think. But all of this out of one sample and um, some drums, and that's it, and a little bit of hype. Yeah, shout out to the AK4 from south to north, whatever you want to do, you can do of course, it's a mess, 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 like Rick Ross. <laughs> So, at the moment, like I say, if you want to check how I do arrangements, I've got it in my playlist, I've set up a playlist. So the only thing I would do now is, I'd have this as my um, project, and then I've got another folder, what I call my live projects, and all I've done is flattened everything. So, they'll be flattened, and while they're flattened, I can now just use them for an arrangement, and that arrangement I can use live as well, so if I wanted to go out and do this on stage or anything I can, if I want to arrange it, Bob's your uncle, do you know what I mean, all the sounds there, and, and the, the, other, the other thing about that is, that filter I've just got on there and messed about with, but I could do that in the arrangement, and all of this, and automate all of it, because I'd be flattened, and still have this as the original thing. So, I know this has been long, and I hope this has been interesting, and please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.